Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will start off by introducing myself, uh, but before we get to that, uh, don't be shy today. Uh, we are here so that you can all participate. You know, we passed the years of, of national diploma and B degrees. We are all postgraduate students now. So you are allowed to differ with other scholars uh, on things. So I want a more interactive session with you. You're welcome to, to contribute. The other thing is um, a lot of you are in industry most probably already that are already knowing these uh, technologies that I will try to teach to you. So feel free if there's anything that you can contribute then you're welcome to do so. Then also, uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm the HOD for IT, those that went through our interviews in IT, and even computer systems engineering, I was there part of the panel, so you will remember me. Those computer science and informatics people, um, yeah, I am Dr. Dion Duplessis. And my background is IT. Um, yeah, I've worked in industry also for some time. The, 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 the majority of my time uh, I've spent in industry, in different companies, in the telco industry, in the mining industry, and, and so on, is in, in the IT departments of, of, of those kind of companies. So yes, I, I, I will share some experience with you, but I think the most important thing today is, is as we go through this, because what I'll try is to introduce uh, cloud computing to you, um, and please bear with me, because you know what, uh, you might hear something that you already know, but it doesn't mean that somebody else uh, doesn't know, uh, already also know that. Uh, the, the next person next to you might not know it. We, we don't all share the same speciality, so, uh, or the specialization. So bear with me, uh, because something that might sound simple to you might be the first time that somebody else is, is hearing that. So, uh, and then as we go along, and, and that actually complies to all the other classes that you're going to do is, what is the thing that you will have in mind while sitting here listening to me? Is you a postgraduate student and you are going to do some research. And what we do here is to introduce you to, to all the different fields. So uh, even if you've selected one, you might still want to change it but also it will help you to formulate things like your research questions, you know, all those kind of things uh, that you went through and, and, and the panel has asked you difficult questions about. So, as we go along, look at that. And what I will try to do is, as I come along some of, 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 of res possible research areas, I will also just mention it to you. Uh, because I think the, the big purpose is you a master in computing. So you need to know all the fi other fields, especially the developing technologies out there. You need to be aware of that. That's number one. And then number two is, yes, most probably you will have to do some research in, in one of those fields. Uh, so that's why it's most probably not the last time that I will see you. Uh, next time when we see each other, we will go a little bit deeper into cloud computing. So we're just hitting the surface now and I'll give you a little bit of background about cloud computing, you know, where it comes from. Um, if you look at my age, I think it's, it's clear that I've been a, around for, for some time. Hey? <laughs> So we will most probably just touch on all the old uh, technologies as well to just show you how things are developing and how new technology is evolving, uh, you know, over time. Now the, the learning outcomes 
for, for, for today's lesson is um, we will start off with a background of cloud computing where we will go a little bit back um, those years when I was when, when I actually started in, in IT so we will just touch on that a little bit and then we will describe, describe the whole architecture of cloud computing uh, because uh, there's some ar architecture that's in place for cloud computing that we want to just discuss with you and then we will sort of identify the hardware requirements for, for cloud computing. Uh, that's the next outcome. And yeah, the, the software requirements that's needed for, for cloud computing, we will, there are different ones. We will most probably introduce one or two to you, but remember there are more uh, that, that, that exist. Uh, then, you know, a lot, of the IT students will remember that we were also focusing not only on communication networks but also on security and so also for I think, I think computer science is also one that is is focusing on 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 cyber security so <clears throat> what we will discuss is you know the challenges that that exist uh, some of them exist there you know for some time it's not new, even before cloud computing. Some of them are, you know, are just more difficult because of cloud computing. So we will just go through all of that and, and discuss that with you. Okay, to start off with the background. You know, I come from the, the years of mainframes. And it looks almost like as we speak cloud computing, we sort of moving a little bit back into what used to be the mainframe uh, computing uh, that used to exist. I had the privilege to work on one of them uh, many years back on AS400, uh, it's an IBM system, um, where you know we've actually built an ERP system on it. Um, where we were handling the finance and all the other resources of the company on this AS400. Uh, so that was like, on the one side you had like what they call dumb terminals, uh, which is not the PC, it's a terminal, it doesn't have processing power and all those kind of things. Everything is done on the back end, um, on the mainframe. And that's why I say this is most probably where we're going back to with cloud computing, where it used to be like the AS400 or the, the mainframe. So the terminals, uh, you will have terminals on your desk and you will actually access the system from there. It will be the whole system with a database all running on this piece of hardware uh, the main, called the mainframe with, if you go in, it, it's like a DOS kind of feeling when you, you go into that, the screen because there's different menus that you will go through um, and select the menu that you want to, to do. If it is a new order that you want to create, you will go into the order uh, menu and then it will actually follow another menu, another menu and you will type your, your information in there. You will see there's also places for function keys because function keys, the F keys, you've used a lot in these mainframe computers, uh, you know, in the olden days. Then, yeah, then there's a command line that is actually much easier sometimes to use if you know what you are doing then you can uh, easily get to where you, you need to be. I still remember when I was working for Telco many years back, and I think it's more than 15, 20 years back. Uh, when I worked for Telco, we had a mainframe computer there, and um, you know we were updating uh, some database information, you know, using keystrokes. We record it and, and you run that keystroke and it actually goes through the menus because the menus is the same and it will capture the data, get the data from a spreadsheet, capture it on there. But those are the olden days. 
Okay, if you start speaking about um, cloud computing, something that just jumped to mind is data center. Who of you is working in a data center at this point in time? Oh yes, one, one person. Where you actually are maintaining the infrastructure and walking into a data center and there are some rules in terms of how it's built and, and all those kind of things. And you know, in industry, you will get audited on all these things um, of the, the data center. We're not at cloud computing yet. I'm just building the background at this point in time. Because for you to, to see these private clouds and, and so on the hardware, you will have to walk into a data center and this is where you... I had the, the opportunity to work in a data center for, for many years. And yeah, normally there is a lot of heat that is created in this, in this environment. That's why cooling systems is important. Nowadays, we don't have it like in the olden days where you have an aircon in a data center that is blowing and you sometimes need to take your jacket and sit there because it's very cold inside. Nowadays, you've got racks where, where they have this air conditioner inside the racks and, and it's closed with doors, glass doors, and, and then you can go there as, you know, without any protection for the cold. Yeah, then just something for information purposes. Normally the roof and the ceiling shouldn't be of anything that can burn easily because if something happened inside there, um, a fire starts, then, then it shouldn't burn down the, this whole equipment. Yeah, and that just reminds me about something. is um, something that people normally easily forget about a data center is um, we can install nice huge UPSs but sometimes people forget about the, the cooling because those UPSs most of them uh, is not really strong enough to, to run this. So just something to remember. <coughs> And then everything is running, but the, the aircon is down, so it goes up the heat, the heat until it shut down itself, because there is some protection in this hardware that allows it to shut down when it overheats. Okay, dust obviously, obviously shouldn't be in there, so uh, dust proof, and then um, normally it's a lifted floor where, um, you know, <coughs> I, I once came to, to one of the, the companies and I found the data center in the basement. Do you think it's a good thing? I won't mention the name of the company now. <laughs> if we just remember recently in Centurion what happened with that one hotel. Um, and, 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 and I think even if it's on the first floor or, or, or on the ground floor, normally the the floor is also lifted a bit, and, and also to run the cables underneath it and, and so on. Okay, then uh, access control, you get audited for access control. Because you know what, to allow somebody in your data center that's not authorized to be there is a security risk on its own. Uh, so people can easily you know, get into your servers and, you know, start um, doing some harm there and changing stuff and stealing data and so on. Okay, but we in, the, in, in these years where we in the process of changing into the cloud computing and, and this is what I, I'm trying to say on, on this <coughs> slide. Application software had to be installed on a, on a user's computer in the past 
So you, you know the whole licensing and everything was a nightmare, actually an admin nightmare, because uh, you need to maintain all those licenses and even you need to do some installations on the client machine to be able to connect to the server and to the system on there and to, and to do what you're supposed to do. Um, that's the old client server model where you know that you you have to purchase enough licenses and maintain those licenses and so on but that's just a, a photo of how it used to be in some instances it's still the same you will see there's a server there's one piece of hardware if you look at the server it's a piece of hardware which is not the case anymore with cloud computing uh, you don't have one single um, box anymore. Uh, it could be more boxes uh, with virtual servers. Okay, cloud computing um, licensing is uh, provides applications for server that are um, um, executed and managed by the client web browser. So, what happens is you, if you have a web browser, you will be able to to connect. To, to these um, servers. Cloud server uh, provide, providers have complete control over applications. So they will be the ones controlling uh, all the applications. So, uh, and this is more in a, uh, in a public kind of cloud environment where you actually, as the IT department of a, of a specific um, company will actually give their power away and, and, and somebody else will be. Software as a service, I think those of you that knows cloud computing, that's one of the buzzwords in, in cloud computing nowadays. Software as a service terms used to describe the application program offered through the cloud computing. So, but we will go into more detail into um, software as a service very soon where I will actually give you some examples of, of, of software as a service that we can, uh, that we are familiar with and sometimes you already have seen some of these things but you're not aware of that it's actually these buzzwords that, that it comes from. Cloud computing, what I'm trying to do on this slide is just to show you that uh, with cloud computing, you, you might have a lot of hardware uh, that is sitting in a cloud and then the client web browser to connect to, to that specific cloud um, to do your processing and your storage of, of, of data. Okay, there are different devices uh, that can be used to connect to, to the cloud. Obviously, the main thing is it should be web friendly, so it should have a browser that can browse to, to the cloud, uh, the, the, to the cloud uh, whether it's a private cloud or, or a, a public cloud, uh, it should be able to to connect to that. You will see there's PCs, laptops, cell phones, you know nowadays that it's easy with the cell phones also. Uh, I, I think the, the one that everybody is familiar with is, is the Google one, eh? Google Drive. Huh? And we trust everybody with our information. Huh? And I think that's one of the things that, that is happening with uh, public clouds is, is all of a sudden uh, your, your data is somewhere there in the cloud and you know, if it has been compromised, you wouldn't even know. So that's, that's the challenges. And th these are one of the challenges that comes with cloud computing is, uh, you know, out there and you know, there's, this, uh, this is a new way of, of war out there. And you know what, sometimes we think that we don't get attacked. Um, but if you start uh, monitoring, then you will realize, uh, you know, how many times people already tried to, to attack you. 
uh, or your company. Um, while I was in industry, people will normally call me after they have been hacked. And they will tell me, you know what, uh, Microsoft has called me. And they were telling me, but this is more social engineering. And they give all the stuff out to the, to, 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 to the hackers and they steal their money. Okay. Yeah, obviously, the reason why we go for cloud computing, there should be some benefits. Otherwise, why are we doing it? So among all these other challenges that we're having, and we will actually discuss more challenges soon, there are specific reasons why we are doing it and the benefits that we're getting from this. You know, scalability, I think, is, 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 is it's actually one of the crits of this. Because with cloud computing, it's easy, easily scalable, scalable. Because if you need, say for instance, you've opened up now this, <clears throat> this nice website where everybody is going and so on, and you will actually grow out of your capacity, then it's easy. Nobody that is carrying hardware around uh, to, 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 to help you and to bring you more resources. In a public cloud, it's easy. You just simply uh, create a new server, or, um, and we will actually get to that, how, how does it work. And yeah, what is also making it easy is the pay-as-you-go kind of arrangement that is with cloud computing. It's easy to just simply buy as you go along. And you can also give up, you know. It's not like a capital investment where you're now sitting with this equipment. If it's a public cloud, you can actually scale up, scale down. If you're, you know, the website that you've created is, is nobody wants to look at it anymore or less people, then you can easily scale down and, you know, make it uh, use more, less resources for it. And I think this is one of the things that is driving industry uh, also to go for cloud computing. Um, is This is the benefits that, that we're getting from that. Okay, you know, there are different kind of, of, of clouds. Um, for today's class, uh, we will only concentrate on the two, but I'll mention the others, uh, public, private, and then there's one that they call a community cloud, and then there's a hybrid cloud, um, which is actually a combination of public and, and private clouds. Okay. Um, a private cloud offers sort of similar, similar features um, and benefits as the, as the public cloud. However, a private cloud offers more control over enterprise customer data security and all those regularities um, uh, that you need to put in place, policies, procedures, and, and so on. So the private cloud gives you more control. Um, that's, that's the difference. Scalability also on the other side is, yes, uh, you will still have to do some capital investments um, because uh, you will need the hardware to be there when you need it. So you will have to plan properly. While with a public cloud, uh, it's, it's, it's not needed because the provider should actually plan for, for that growth. Okay, virtualization. I think um, cloud computing can't exist without virtualization. Or it will be very difficult for it to re it exist without virtualization. And that's why you will see that a lot of virtualization will be covered even in the next 
um, sessions that we will have if you select cloud computing for your research area that we will be spending time on because um, <coughs> virtualization is the key drive you know for for cloud computing you know servers is not like I've said earlier is not like a piece of hardware anymore a server can be um, just pieces of different hardware um, and this is where virtual servers comes in so a server will run over different hardware components um, even nowadays and I think I mustn't run in front of my slides now but you know in, in the olden years when 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 I started in IT we had servers that was like these tower pieces that were standing on the floor in a server room and then after that they've put it into these racks uh, you know you that is in infrastructure uh, what is it you mang mang you <laughs> There's, it, it, the, the names of it is, <laughs> but U5, U10, or, or so, those, those cabinets. Um, and I've worked with the HP servers, the Proland servers that you, you put in there. But that time is gone now. Now we've got what they call blade servers. Eh? When you come into this, the data center, who was in the data center? I say, I've asked the previous time who worked there, but who saw the data center inside already? Yeah. Okay, for those that put up their hands, just a quick question. <laughs> now, I'll scare you not to put up your hand again. <laughs> Normally, when you see an orange light somewhere, what could it be when you just walk into the data center? You normally it's green lights, but you see an orange light somewhere. Forty. 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 Oh, yeah. Normally, like your hard drives and so on, your SAN. We will still speak about the SAN. If you walk in this, the data center, we used to call it server rooms. Data center. If you walk in, you see an orange light. You know that there's most probably something is down there so but the blade servers like the old ones was like in horizontal in the rack now it's in a blades enclosure but yeah now I'm running ahead of my slides okay but in a virtual server you get like in a physical server also and this is not only only that but I just want to try and explain the concept is processors so you need processing power on your virtual machine. And you need memory. Now with memory, um, and I don't think, did I take that slide out, but uh, I had a slide there. Um, who, wh what is physical memory and virtual memory? What's the difference? Do anybody know? Physical memory and virtual memory. I want you just to speak to me. <coughs> Those people that are in the infrastructure, the hardware. Uh, it's got memory, uh, gross memory that we can put into yeah. uh, the computer. And the virtual one, uh, the one that we can be yeah. able to allocate it to a certain system. Yeah, it's a hard drive space. Yes. Yeah. There's a virtual memory. <laughs> and what the, so, um, sometimes happens is when you run out of physical memory, then it runs into virtual memory. Even the support service people do that. Eh? You run into the virtual memory, and then they say you, the machine start paging. Eh? That's the, the word that they use, is it start paging. Because then it reads and writes all, all the time. So it's important the, when you do your virtual s server, that you allocate the physical memory and also the virtual memory. But the, the physical memory, uh, it's important, normally uh, those servers that are using, uh, where you open bigger files and so on, 
you will obviously give more physical memory. Because what happens when you open a file, it pulls it into memory. Uh, and then it will do all the changes in memory and then when you're done and you save, then it writes it to, to the disk. But we will actually come to that now because there's also some things that in, in cloud computing that optimize the read and write. Eh? I see here somebody else that looks like you in infrastructure also. You're not. You're afraid that I'll ask you're afraid that I'll ask you questions, eh? <laughs> okay, I won't ask you difficult questions. And you know what? You, uh, what I normally say in class, and, and, and luckily, uh, Tess, you will still edit this so you can cut some of it out. <laughs> um, you know, what I sometimes say is, I will allow you to copy in class. Not in a test, don't get me wrong. <laughs> copy in class, you can Google even in class. Normally, I say to the, uh, the undergraduate students, this is your time to copy. <laughs> because the, 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 the nice thing is, at least you will know where to find the answer. You're not allowed to copy in, in the test or exam, but you're allowed to copy. And you can even call a friend. Huh? You know that TV program, call a friend. Find out what's the right answer. At least you've got the answer. Okay, then um, storage. You know, storage sometimes looks so simple. It's just a bench of hard drives. But you know, we'll get, you'll find people in infrastructure that specialize only in this. Because it has become a specialized field. And you will understand as we go along um, how it is actually, but um, a SAN, can somebody tell me what the SAN stands for? Storage area network. Storage area network. This is now where you have like a, a lot of hard disks that is put in one area where you can connect all the servers, the virtual servers on. How do you create, um, say, a, a drive for, for a specific virtual machine? What are you using on the scene? What are you creating on the scene when you, you create like a drive for your virtual machine? LANs, yes. There's somebody, who, who answered that? <laughs> I won't ask you more, but at least, <laughs> At least there's somebody that, 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 that has done something about that. And NES, I had the opportunity to work with a couple of nurses, although I don't like them because I think you can do much better with the sand. But it looks like it's just the other way around. The S is now in f at the back and N is in front, eh? So you can remember it. Sand, NES. NES is also, I've used the, the Netgear NESs before and I've, uh, what I've used it for was for more like a, like a file server where you can store some, some files. And there's, you can't really run, say, like a, an application or something on there, but it is suitable for for that and that's what I, I use it for. But what I want you to understand is that you've got these, and maybe there are more, but these are the ones that I want you to understand. That the storage, you've got the sand, and you've got the, the NES. And normally, unlike the old PCs, uh, personal computers, it, okay, nowadays they also have, you can build in more hard drives. But, um, they, they have mo normally more than one hard drive, uh, a NES. Uh, so, and there's some rates 
set up on it, but we'll get to that now. Um, okay, on the network. Virtual networks. You know, um, and I think all of you, if you were studying here, you know you've done CGS, eh? No, it's before your time. Now you're giving away your, your age to me. Eh? <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but this is, this is uh, the Cisco um, course that, that, that first years are doing. And, and all first years are doing that. So, but never mind, don't, don't worry. Uh, I understand, you know, sometimes I also remember things that people think I wasn't there then. Uh, and, and then they know how, how old I am. So, yeah. Um, but you, they, they will teach you about VLANs. Virtual, what, what does VLAN stand for? <laughs> Virtual uh, Local Area Network. Um, that's what it stands for. Okay, um, so it's not like the olden days, a piece of fiber that is running here, or UTP cable that is running here. And you know what, um, this is the, the only way, you know, uh, this is only one line running there. With virtual, a virtualization of the LAN, um, you will get VLANs. And where do you set up your VLANs? Switches. This is where you put up your lens. And normally in industry with lens, um, you will set, set up um, different VLANs for different purposes. And you know, virtual lens can actually, you know, hackers like it also. Eh? We will get to it now because <laughs> There's a nice thing, you create this, this one VLAN uh, for guests. You know, everybody that bring their own device. Sometimes in your company, the head office guys come there. You don't want to set them up and all this. They, uh, no, you've, we've got a guest VLAN. I'll just give you the SSID password. You will be able to log in. But, you know, hackers is using that because wireless networks nowadays uh, is not like the physical network where you can lock somebody just simply out. It's, they can come in and they can, they can see it. Or there is though, uh, what I normally do at home <coughs> is I hide my SSID uh, so that nobody can see it. Uh, so you need to know the name to type in just uh, for interest sake. Okay, yeah, this is not the only virtual lens or the software lens that you have. There are something, um, you know, when you go on your blades enclosure, those different servers should speak to each other. Hey? They should communicate. And therefore, there are also virtual switches that is on on the blade enclosure that will assist you to you know where to connect between the different servers just something that i forgot um, about on the this the storage side and i've i've worked a lot with hp and their blade enclosures uh, who, who else did work with anything else than HP? Blade enclosures. Any, anybody? I'm in the process of buying a blade enclosure and a SEN for, for the, the university. So maybe soon, if you are doing your research, we can play around a little bit on that. But what normally happens is, there's also a hard drive on, on the blade enclosure. 
because you don't want something to boot from the sand, you know, you, especially your VMware and all those kind of things. And that's why you, you have that, that hardware, uh, that uh, piece of hard drive that is sitting in there. And you will normally set it up like that. You might know of more. Who know of more virtualization software? Even one more. Virtualbox. Sorry? Virtualbox. Virtualbox. Yeah. Mm. Citrix. Citrix. But these are the two that I want us to just look at. I had the opportunity to work with VMware, so I'm a little bit biased to VMware. Uh, not this, yeah, but those are the two softwares that, that we get, and it's important, this software, because um, this is what is allowing you to create these virtual machines and, and all of that. Um, those of you that has played, I, I hear there's somebody that has already played with this around, is, um, yeah, it, it's very powerful. This, this software to, to help you, but it's also sometimes dangerous in the hands of the wrong people. Okay, this is just explaining what I've just now explained. The slide is virtualization, use of software to simulate a physical computer environment. And the use of virtual hardware on which you can install a number of operating systems and interact with them. So this is what it's allowing you. Present the virtual op um, operating platform to the guest operating system and manage the executions. So that I've explained. Okay, rapid pro provisioning of of, of machines, like we said. If your, your website is growing fast, then at least <coughs> you will have the opportunity to quickly add a server without carrying hardware around. Yeah, and, and, and you know, some of the features that this software is giving you is a template of a server. That's the nice thing about these virtual environments. Also, most probably one of the bigger benefits is you can clone a server, you can quickly um, create a new server from a template. You know, it's a couple of minutes. You know, people, somebody is asking you, I need a new server for, for, for exchange. And you say, just hang on, uh, I'm busy creating one. Okay, there are some processes that you need to follow before you get there. You know, this is more admin processes and so on. But it's so easy to do it. And, you know, <clears throat> once in the industry, something that, that, that we came across, was that there was somebody implementing a system, a ERP system on our environment. And what the person has done is to put both the database server and application server on the same server, running on the same server. And they were competing for resources. You can add resources and so on, but in any case, Best practice said that it should be separate. So you know how easy it is with, with in the cloud, with virtual machines is you clone that one server and you just remove on this one the application, on that one the database. Huh? And you've got to. Something that in the past would have taken you a couple of days to do because you will have to set up a new server, you will have to, to back up the data and move the data to another server, you know, set up all the users uh, on that server, all those kind of things. 
it's, it's, it's not needed because of virtualization. Okay, what I'm trying to say there, I just wanted that, that last bullet point to remind me, if I didn't tell you about Blade servers by now, is Blade servers, this is what we are using, and one virtual machine. Over how many uh, Blade servers can you create uh, a virtual machine? How many blade servers can you, over how many blade, blade servers can you create a virtual server? This is a physical server. You, you, you are using one blade server and you want to create a virtual server within uh, that blade server. You want the number of uh, visualizations. Now the number of hardware servers. That's the other way around. I know it's not an easy question. I hope you get me right. <laughs> Is how, how many physical servers can you use to create a virtual server? Maybe, yeah. maybe I must just take it one step back. Maybe I must just explain it. You know what? And most probably this because I didn't explain it is that a virtual server don't need to run on one server, physical server. Yeah, Blade server. It can run in a Blade enclosure over more than one Blade server. Yes, more especially if you are, uh, if you want to the replication of the same a visual machine that we do have no. on a single blade server. Of course, you need to do it to another blade server. So just say again, I didn't hear you properly. Let's say if you want to replicate uh, the, visual, the visual machine that we do have yes. on a single blade server. Of course, you need to have another blade server so that uh, when the other one goes down, then the other one can be able to take off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, 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 that's true, this is redundancy that you're trying to explain. But with resources, if you need a server with more processing power, what will you do then? Then it's more pr processing power than this one server can give you. This is where what is virtualization is making it so, so, so much easier is now you can run it over more than one. I know when they explain to you this, uh, normal virtualization, they use normally one box to, to explain virtualization. But virtualization, like a SAN, doesn't need to run only on one hard drive. It's different hard drive so you can put together in one. Oh, yes, yeah, you can create several applications. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then remember, the physical server can be able to be scripted in order to run the database within a single blade server. Then you can also run another application to save some of the papers not linked with the database server because it cannot be able to be. Uh, you use uh, a, a single set, mm. then that you need to separate so mm. that uh, if uh, the database is down, the application should be up. Okay, yeah, I, I think what you're trying to explain is my example that I've just made about the, you know, the competing. Remember, when you create a virtual machine, what are you doing? This is a pool of resources that you are putting together. <coughs> Processing power, um, memory. You put this all together and you say, this is what is needed for, for this server. But I think you will, ex will understand it better when we come to, to clustering. 
because clustering actually explains this much better. All right, just what I've just said now is, this is what a virtual server complies. It's got a hard drive space, processor, memory, it's got a network card. Uh, normally, these are also virtual network cards that they have. And yeah, and a USB uh, controller. This is <coughs> what these virtual machines consist of. It's all these components. Are you all with me? Yes. Don't try to to figure things out if you, you know, ask me a question and, 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 and I'll answer you. But this is, this is what it consists of. Um, don't think in the old fashion of hardware. Because with virtualization, it's no longer. Just for inter sake, how many VLANs can you put on, on a on a switch, or on a network? Uh, you can put as many as possible, but different means of the IP address. Then each and every visual can be identified by the IP. Yes, you can use your, your VLANs because there's no limited number, but you can use it to segment your network. Um, did anybody do subnetting? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you're trying to explain. Okay, storage virtualization. Um, and I think this part I most probably did explain when I was speaking about the SAN and the NES. Because what I tried to explain with this slide is that um, you know file server and uh, it's a similar kind of thing that we do with a NES. But on this slide, <coughs> what I want to just touch on is rates. Now I, here is a couple of people that know some infrastructure. What is rates? What what are we referring to when we speak about rates? I don't want the name because it's written there on the board. <laughs> 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 you know, with my other students at at um, undergrad, and sometimes I ask a question and then the answer is on the board and then I, I still don't get the answer. Um, <laughs> what is, wh what do you want to achieve with rate? With what with enough? With rates. Yeah. When you're setting up rates on your storage. I have Sorry? Clustering? Not really. Uh, clustering, you can most probably argue, but this is not the answer that I'm looking for. Uh, right. Let's hear from our infrastructure person. Yeah. Sorry? Uh, the last is more about network attached okay. The, the S drive can be able to operate. Yes, yes, you're 100% right. Yeah, like a file server, like I said. Outside of the, uh, the, the fiscal server. Mm. But for the purpose, if, if the server can be able to experience uh, certain problems, then it won't affect the storage. Okay. But rates, when you set up rates, because you can set up rate on a SAN on a NES. Just say again. You mean the main purpose of the redundant for, for, array? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. The main purpose of the redundant array. Sorry? Performance is one. You're 100% right. Performance is the one. What's the other one? Failover. Who said that? <laughs> yeah, and that's why, uh, remember I asked the question earlier that when you walk in to a data center 
and you see orange light on your sand. Number one, what does it mean? There's a hard drive that's faulty. Number two, how can you fix it? Sorry. You, some of you are most probably managers. You can speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting, this infrastructure thing. Um, I, I, yeah, maybe people from computer science won't agree with me. But it's fine, you, you will get your turn when you will speak some programming. Um, what's the other reason for it? Oh, what, it, what was my question? How will you fix this hard drive that is broken? Yeah, how will you fix the hard drive that is, can you fix it, number one? No, you can't, you can't fix it. So how will you fix the situation? Because now there's a drive that's not working. Okay, before we get there, I, I hear the answer there. Uh, people say it already, replace. Yes, you can replace it. Depends on the way you configure. Yes! There's the answer. Based on the rate that you've created, or you set up on, on that, then you can most probably just take it out. Because you won't lose any data, right? Because of the rate. Somebody said, that it, uh, what was the other, somebody said, no, I can't remember what, what it was. But in any case, this is, this is the next reason why you are doing rate. And there are different kind of rates. And what I've tried is just to, to tell you more or less which one, somebody has said, it depends on the rate. Which rate here would you select when you allow to just remove any, uh, there, I think there's more than one, but you can just give me one. <coughs> um, that you can... The most common one is rate 5. Yes. Rate 5. Uh, won't, you won't lose data if you uh, just pull out the, the, the hard drive. Because the way it, the data is stored is it's stored with a lot of redundancy, you know, data in, on different uh, disks. So when you pick, take out this one, it will actually, with the distributed parity, it will build, rebuild that if you replace it uh, automatically. Any questions on that? Okay, I think this is just a picture um, that explains what I'll just explain to you. Yeah, and, and this is in a nutshell what on, on cloud computing, how it looked, um, you know, application server and the, in the, in the SAN or the NAS, or more, in, in this instance, the SAN that is sitting there uh, at the back end. The application server is connecting to the SAN. Yeah, okay, with the SAN, like we've said, is when you store data, it looks like you store it on one single drive. But it's not like this. Um, it will be stored over different drives. Okay, you just remember me, those cl there's a quite a number of people that knows this stuff. What are you trying to achieve with stripping? Hmm. I forgot to ask that question. Where's our infrastructure, guys? And ladies. 
Hmm? Okay. Sorry. Stripping. What are we meaning with it? Striping. I said stripping, striping. Because that's the, the, the other one of, of RAID that I didn't mention. It's about input output, eh? IOs. You still remember your A plus? Hmm? Input output. Because if you're writing to one single disk, it's much lower than when you're writing to different disks. And this is what they are trying to achieve there. Network virtualization, I think I've said enough about that. Um, this is where you set up different VLANs. And we are, the only one thing that I want to discuss here is the security challenges that you're having with, with, uh, with network, uh, with virtual LANs. Clustering. What are we trying to achieve with clustering? Sorry? I have availability. I availability, yes. And what else? Sorry? Reduce load balancing. Eh? <laughs> you you now like my my, my uh, undergrad uh, load balancing. It's it's on on the board there. Load. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then obviously redundancy, which uh, was mentioned. And this picture is just trying to tell you what clustering is more than one um, server. You know, in a cluster, working together, look as one server. Okay, um, the benefits, I, I, I think, of um, of cloud computing, and I think even it goes beyond that, is this role-based uh, security. Um, so, which is <coughs> make it more secure. Um, and I think, let me just see uh, to a limited number of virtual machines available to a user. So you, based on, on, on the roles of, of people or users, uh, you will set that up. Uh, something that, that people will do, those of you that has done some um, support services uh, and has done Active Directory. Active Directory, this is actually the directory where you are doing your user uh, where you're managing your users and you know your all your machines and everything and and this is where role based security comes in okay these buzzwords um if i don't show you this uh, you didn't do cloud computing because these are the things and they come more sometimes out when people are presenting the concept papers is infrastructure as a service. So, um, you purchase infrastructure as a service, so you buy uh, quite a number of servers, um, or most probably sometimes network equipment as well, and, and this is what infrastructure as a service actually is. So this is now when it's not a private cloud, public cloud when your company has outsourced your cloud to somebody, some cloud provider. 
platform as a service, um, the business solutions. I will just go through a, a couple of them, you know, just, and you can actually read through it in, uh, as well because I've captured it, and this from Microsoft Cloud. Okay? And then a software as a service, um, yeah, you buy some apps. And the example there is Google Apps that you buy and you can actually use it um, because it's sold to you as a service, software as a service. Plot platform as a service, um, I just try to give you some examples here uh, from Microsoft and um, yeah, those are email, instant messaging, uh, which is your linked online from Microsoft that a lot of companies has already adopted. Uh, online document editing. Um, and then one that I've worked on a lot is SharePoint collaboration, uh, where they build like document management systems and, and so on. Um, yeah, you don't need to be a programmer to to use it, just click and drag, and drop, all those kind of things. As infrastructure people, we don't like that programming thing, eh? So this works for us. Okay, software as a service. Um, those are the web applications that Microsoft is giving us. Um, Word, Excel, you know, all those Office products. You get it for uh, your PC and then you get it for the cell phones and so on. So um, this is a service um, that we, we are buying. Emails where I think a good one, this one is now for Microsoft, but a good other one that we all are using is Gmail, eh? where your mail is sitting somewhere in the cloud, in the private cloud. In Google's, Google's private cloud. So, um, yeah, then Active Directory, I know, you know, you can have still, you don't need to be on a cloud to use Active Directory, but you know, Active Directory in integration is helping you single sign on. You only have one password. Um, and you can actually, when your company has used the private cloud, there's that one single sign on and you can get access to all the applications that you need to, to have. Simple file sharing, I think that one is also a very familiar one when it comes to Google, eh? Web conferencing. Where you nowadays can have a conference uh, on the web, on the cloud computer. <laughs> um, internet team sites. SharePoint one again, once again, mailboxes, uh, e-discovery center, all these services um, are rendered by cloud, cloud providers. Business intelligence, where is the informatics people? Yes, see we actually got something for informatics as well. <laughs> Business intelligence, eh? Well, such a good tool, eh? Power BI and Click View, those kind of tools, eh? You can use on the cloud. Okay, um, hardware requirements for cloud computing is servers and storage, and then uh, obviously you 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 will. Uh, network switches and routers are needed to build networks and a router within the private virtual machine network to provide a uh, network that is providing DHCP support and net 
support? What is net? Can somebody quickly explain what is net? DHCP, I believe everybody knows. Hmm? <laughs> You're getting clever now, eh? <laughs> but maybe I must ask you to explain what he does. <laughs> yeah, but I believe you will be able to explain. You know, nowadays you're actually hiding your inside of the network uh, by having a public IP, uh, which is completely different than your private IPs. Hey, uh, this is in a nutshell what we are meaning there. Okay, this picture, I'm not going to go through a lot of detail. We've covered a lot of this. this it's just how our network looks. Um, yeah, this is just processing power. I'm trying to explain. Uh, you know, for dual processors, uh, dual core processors, um, which is actually operating as if they are two, two processors. You know this uh, by now. It's old technology, eh? And the X core is not a lady with black, eh? On a broom. X. Hmm? What is it? It's six, I think, eh? Okay. Yeah, this is um, uh, and this is my the slides that I'm using is, but there are different ways that I allocate this memory. But uh, for you now, when you start, and even uh, for those when we are doing a more practical kind of class, uh, we will actually start by doing this. Uh, start with 32 megabits and and so on, and and you know add some more memory, physical memory, and virtual memory. Okay, that brings us to one of the, the slides that will, should be also, should also help you when you want to do some research and the security challenges, especially in the IT uh, department where we're doing communication networks and security. These are some of the security challenges that exist there. Uh, the, VM, the VM level attacks. They call it hyperjacking. So I'm introducing you to, to this because it's, this is where when you can get access to the, to, to the virtual environment, then obviously you have access to everything else. Then uh, VLAN hobbing, and this is something that should be more familiar because this is something that already exists. Uh, it's not only in cloud computing. Huh? There are two um, kind of, of, of attacks that, you know, that are very, um, that comes uh, often, that people likes a lot, attackers, is <coughs> switch spoofing. Um, if you know what IP spoofing is, then you will understand this. Is there somebody that wants to help us? Spoofing. Yes. So what they do is there is a switch that they configure it act as if it's a, another switch. And this is how they get into the VLAN. Double tagging. This is when it's tagged and as it goes through the switch, then the tag is removed then it can opt the, the, the network because then it's got the, 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 the IP address is now something in a, different, in a different VLAN. And this is how people actually do these kind of things. Um, hack into a different, 
uh, VLAN. Okay, something that you lose that is not always nice to lose it with a public cloud is those security locks. Because um, security locks is important to, to look and see, you know, when you compromise, you can see a person that came in on the locks, you know, what was done, you know, how many times, that, what did they try to do. On, on these locks, but when it's in a public cloud, you don't, you don't have that anymore. Authentication attacks, because you don't have control now over the authentication anymore. SQL injections on the web server, dangerous one. Anybody that knows, this is also one that the hackers like a lot. Eh? And you don't need to be very smart to do this one. Eh? Can somebody explain what you do here on that website when you log in? You write a C SQL statement in the text box. Yes. yes. You put the SQL statement because there's no rules. If the rules is not on the text box, you will put in a SQL statement and it will run it on the database and it will give you some results. And this is how you get compromised. Simple. You don't need to to be, uh, you know, a uh, rocket scientist to to be able to see it. It's as easy as as that. And now with with web servers, remember, with with cloud computing, your internal users are sometimes also accessing through the internet. So um, while you had in the past. Before cloud computing, you had this within your, you know, you still have your DMZ where after the DMZ you still get into your, into your network. So there's firewalls and all those kind of things. It's not, it's not that simple anymore because remember this is public facing um, uh, servers, this web server. Sun floods. Do anybody know what that is? That you should need be a network person to understand that. It's a denial of service, obviously. Yeah, it's exchanging of a lot of data from the network. It's exchanging of a lot? Yeah, the I think what, what, what it more is, is, is uh, there's a, there's a three-way handshake, okay? When you connect to, 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 to another piece of equipment. So what, what the hacker does is the hacker send, PC send the message. But he sent quite a number of them, but there's some IP spoofing also involved because now it's a, the, it, the reply, the ac acknowledgement reply, goes to somebody else. Uh, it doesn't come back to him. So, but th that session stays open for some time. And because that session stays open for some time, uh, it takes up resources. And it's just hammering it with a lot of those kind of of uh, you know, uh, synchronization kind of, of request. It's a synchronization request. Um, yeah, I even put IP spoofing there at the bottom because this is what they are using. Then, um, I wonder, is this not the last? No, it's not. But Nessus, uh, I don't know those guys of you that are in in industry, did anybody use this tool? This is just one of the, the many tools that is out there to test for vulnerabilities. I had the opportunity to work with it. It's a script that you run on your network and it runs through your whole network and look for all the vulnerabilities. It's an open, open source tool. And what happens is uh, it, it stays live because as new um, hacking techniques come out and people get 
aware of it, it gets added to, to, to the stool. So you have a lot of experts working on this open source all the time. And you run it on your, on your network and it tells you about all the vulnerabilities. And what I've tried here in the next slide, um, which is almost the last slide, I believe. Um, <coughs> yeah, the patch management. You know, you have your server that is doing your patches, patches especially, I know I was, I was working in a Windows environment. Um, where new patches is coming out and you, but this, this tool actually is telling you where, where the vulnerabilities are. It will even tell you what patch that you didn't run on your environment. So, you know, what you as a researcher would want to do is to improve on things like this. Uh, you know, or create another tool that is looking for something else. Those are the, the kind of, of research that you want to, to do. Um, okay, mobile device management, cloud infrastructure audit, so it can audit the, the infrastructure for you, so you know exactly what is happening there. Database checks that requires authentication because normally, like you said, with SQL injection, it's so easy you can even get all the usernames and passwords from that from that server uh, once you've succeeded with a SQL injection. So uh, these are some of the things. There are mu much more, but I just wanted to introduce you. This is really an introduction to cloud computing, there are much more, more technical stuff that we need to cover going forward. But this is it. I thank you. Any questions? Are you tired? Yes. Yeah, you will have a break now. And then you will come internet of things. Okay. You must enjoy it and uh, yeah, remember it's worthwhile sitting here listening to this. There might come up some assignments in future and I might ask you some of these things in the assignments. Um, all right. <laughs>